Cool thing was, I, I had never met Vin Diesel at that time, but you know, it's, it's kind of standard protocol. You have to give them a, uh, you don't want to say, this is what you're driving. You know, you always have to say, hey, I got a few cars for you. Which one do you like? You know, so um, <laughs> yeah. it definitely had to be a Mopar. So, you know, there's a couple other cars I knew that were around. I mean, none of them were remotely in the, you know, in the same caliber as, as Steve's car. But uh, nonetheless, you know, you bring bring a couple cars out and uh, and it's always, it's, it's like one of, I guess it's one of my skills. I only have like three, but one of them would be <laughs> to uh, persuade, you know, hey, you know, like make it obvious which car is the one. It's a similar deal. Like we took a lot of time, you know, where I was going to park you know, the hammer and the other cars would be maybe off here to the side, maybe mm. the wrong, you know, but whatever. It was just, it was a sure thing. I mean, I had I no, remember. I, remember I had no doubt. I had no doubt going in. I mean, I think I always said, well, I don't know how it's going to work out, but it, you know, I was extremely confident yeah. because the car was, like I said, it was, it was my husband. Hey, welcome to Car Guy Confessions, brought to you by ARP. I'm Jeff Smith. This is my car buddy, Cam Bensey, and car builder, Steve Strope, and we're going to tell you some stories. Welcome to another episode of Car Guy Confessions, Without Jeff Smith this time, but yeah, we, still we, we miss him. Jeff. We miss we miss him, but um, he'll be back. We love him. He's well, always we got him. integral. We got all. We got I'll, I'll do my best. That's right. Stand in. You got to got to shave your head. So, so is that well. <laughs> <laughs> it's, doing, it's doing it by itself. That's but, it. Yeah. That's it. That, uh, so uh, we're sponsored by ARP, ARP, ARP Bolts. Uh, ARP yes. Dash Bolts. That's right. ARP Dash Bolts. We'll just, get, we'll just keep going here. ARP Dash Bolts.com. We appreciate all their uh, their efforts and uh, all the things that they've done for us, keeping us going. We're, we're, we're two and a half years in. You know that? We got like 70, 70, 70 episodes? Somewhere. F- wow. Busy. Five, 58. There we go. That's almost 70. <laughs> Round up a little bit. That's right. We were talking about not. Remember, we talked about that. Means. Remember? Could you get the flag things out possibly? This is, that's it. It's like flashlights. But uh, yes. So, I mean, we've been doing this a couple of weeks. Like, you know? Yeah. yeah it's, uh, it's, been, yeah. it's been a lot of fun. And it's only happening because ARP and Bob Florina. That's also, true. That's, he's that's the true. man. He's the man. You brought Why is it in. taking so long to get Dennis here? Okay. But Dennis, where have you I, been? What, I lived too far away. That's Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> this is Dennis McCarthy, owner of Vehicle Effects. Uh, I guarantee you, if you're watching the show, you have seen the handiwork of Dennis McCarthy That's right. and his team. Uh, you guys are next door to Leno's. That's the best Very yeah, close. description. You're right. close. Within, within 300 yards. So you're, uh, you're, and close. that is Sun Valley? Yes. Correct. Okay. It's, I mean, it's, it's close. Like half my shop is on Burbank and half my shop is in Sun Valley. I mean, it's like backed literally... up against the Burbank Airport. Correct. Yeah. So right. half of you is, is uh, patrolled by federal <laughs> we we do have Dan a lot of security told me that. In, in that area. It's uh, it's needed, so it's a good thing. So, Abs- yeah. Absolutely, but uh, Dennis and his team. I mean, Dennis has been doing this a while. We're going to get into the background here. I just completed a story for Hot Rod on his uh, background there. But uh, if you've watched the movies and you've seen cars, you may have seen Dennis's handiwork. If you like performance cars, you definitely have seen Dennis's hand- handiwork. You were involved in the last eight Fast and Furious, Correct. including Hobbs and Shaw. Yes. Okay. Correct. Yep. So the first one was uh, Tokyo Drift. Yep. Of the of the Fast and Furious franchise, but yep. you worked on other things as well. Ooh, I have input to that. Please. Mm-hmm. So that was yeah, oh six. Yeah, that's where I met <clears> you. <throat> exactly. And, and this this guy had already, unbeknownst to me, called around to the editors at Hot Rod. Right, you were looking for a Mopar. I cannot remember how I tracked you down but i do know that i was aware of the car and right I was you knew on a of mission, hammer i was on a mission to find the car yeah you know, and then so. he, he calls me up and goes <laughs> it was something along the lines i heard you have the uh the baddest mopar in socal or something like that and i go yeah yeah i do actually and i think i think it was rightfully so that was well, like, you know it was so he he dragged me in uh very willingly i was i was uh humbled and and honored to be a part of it but we were in uh, uh fast uh three there tokyo drift at the end because that it was a write-in right they were bringing Correct. vin diesel's character back in Correct. it wasn't in the script originally no. and someone said hey we're doing this uh create this scene and you're like yeah now you gotta put this all together it was absolutely last minute for me now that doesn't mean that it was last minute for everybody involved but for me that i think I, I got that notice you know a week prior, days prior. I mean, I can't and remember. And you're exactly gathering like 50 cars more, right? We did that whole underground We had parking hundreds of scene. cars. We literally had, I think, close to 300 cars oh, yeah. at the Hawthorne Mall. Um, and then, I mean, I think the area where you saw, that was just one set piece. We had set pieces all over that mall 
for different elements of that whole sequence and drifting. That's true. I was just downstairs so, at the start, have the cars, starting line. I mean, that might have been like kind of my biggest extras card gathering ever in the history of any of the projects I've ever done. Um, and this was Tokyo Drift. Yeah. Okay. And the, the cool thing was, I, I had never met Vin Diesel at that time, but you know, it's, it's kind of standard protocol. You have to give them a. Uh, you don't want to say this is what you're driving. You know, you always have to say, "Hey, I got a few cars for you. Which one do you like?" You know, so. Um, <laughs> Yeah. It definitely had to be a Mopar. So, you know, there's a couple other cars I knew that were around. I mean, none of them were remotely in the, you know, in the same caliber as, as Steve's car. But uh, nonetheless, you know, you bring bring a couple cars out. And uh, and it's always, it's, it's like one of, I guess it's one of my skills. I only have like three. But one of them would be <laughs> to uh, persuade, you know, hey, you know, like make it obvious which car is the one. Like if it was like a photo thing, if I was showing pictures, you know, I would have a car parked, you know, in front of a dumpster. I'd have a car parked over here. By the by the you know the garbage truck whatever and then have one parked with the beach and the sun in the background, and you know the background will get it every time you know I mean it's like it's all in right. the photo sure but in this case too it was kind of this similar deal like we took a lot of time you know where I was going to park you know the hammer and the other cars would be maybe off here to the side maybe mm. the wrong you know but whatever it was just it was a sure thing I mean yeah, I had I no remember. I, remember I had no doubt I had no doubt going in I mean I think I always said well I don't know how it's going to work out but it, you know I was extremely confident yeah because the car was like i said it was it was miles ahead De of the other ones but. describe the car people don't know what they a, don't know what the car is it's, it's a car called hammer yes. and it was a 70 roadrunner that when the owner uh eric approached me doing it he liked muscle cars but he had european stuff and every time he would be describing, because I never name a car on purpose it's usually a nickname we give it around the shop because you got to call something something and Eric would constantly go, but I don't want the standard thing. I want it more like an AMG Hammer, which was a Mercedes Performance Ford or oh, Sedan. Oh, there's the connection. He goes, okay. I want it more like a like like a Hammer. So when we're building the car, everyone just goes, you know, that did you get that the the wheels for Hammer? You know, it just it just right. begat the name, and then so I pulled the um, I took the letters on the tail panel and on the dash that said Plymouth. I had the font copied, and I had new letters made in the same font that said hammer and put that on the back and on the dash. And the, we took it to SEMA and unveiled it there, and I, it was in my, uh, my rides episode, unveiling the car. And uh, the car had a, a lot of acclaim. And then uh, Dennis called up, and we, we put it, uh, took it down, and we filmed that racing scene. And so... <clears throat> Let me tell you about the fun of being in charge of somebody's baby, somebody's car. And we're taking it down <laughs> and we're filming, which is unbelievably fantastic and a huge honor. And we're also, we didn't start filming till nine or 10 at night. There's, there's a lot of sitting <clears throat> around time. And we were, we were going to like, who knows, six, seven, eight in the morning. So, you know, I'm half asleep and he, <laughs> He comes rolling over to me, this dude right here, as smooth as you can get. <laughs> and he just like just tugs on the shoulder. He goes, uh, the directors would like to know if we could take the door off. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, no. <laughs> good, but, good answer. But in, your, but in your head, you're like, am I supposed to take the door off? Should I and I'm like, I'm not. I already know that that's not a good idea. And, and he's reassuring me, one, we're not going to screw it up. Two, heaven forbid anything does, insurance will pay for it. But in my head, remember, I, I'm building these really nice cars for a private individual. It's only bitching once. If you have to repair it, that's scary world to go explaining. So <laughs> luckily I was able to, <laughs> to calm his jets down or he actually went back to them because they wanted a different angle. They wanted to see Vin better. Right? Yeah, they right. wanted the door out of the way right. so they could s see Vin better. And I'm like, <laughs> it's got a window. Shoot right through the window. So, uh, so, you, so you did not take no, the door No, we did not take okay. the door Thank right. goodness he didn't give me no, a I've, whole, I've, I think you went to bat for me. Yeah, I, I'm if, sure if, if it was did. my car, I would have I had the same answer. <clears throat> but I, you know. No, you had, ask, but you had a job to do. You had sure. to relay that yeah, to yeah. me. But and then we were just doing relentless burnouts with it, which was fantastic. <laughs> I know, that I, was I, not CG. That was foot to the floor. Good uh, old we probably should have invoice us for a collect after that. And we probably that, should it, have. It definitely but got but you had amazing, it was the guys who were the same stunt driver, if I remember right, that was driving the car, was the guy that was doing the actual drifting on the mountain roads. And you had told me that wasn't CG either. They were. That was a real deal. They were driving I, for real. 
I could be wrong on this. I'm pretty sure I know that Reese Millen was driving the S15, and I want to say it was Troy Robinson behind the wheel of your car. I think. I I think so. I, but I, I when we were that, talking, but... you would introduce me, and the, one of them, yeah. if not both of them, were were guys doing the. They're movie. all great. Yeah, yeah. All, just all, unbelievably all. talented guys. So yeah. you know, I, I got to relax. It's in the hands of a professional driver, who yeah. who, even though he's looking at my car like a prop. <laughs> um, he's <laughs> he's, that, that, that he's good with the prop. There you go. But yeah. um, and then we, I was fortunate enough. We we were uh, even though it was they, they were stunt double copies. Hammer went on to four. Yeah. And our Torino again, they changed the color and that, stuff. I was very depressed about the. color I was change. very depressed about that too. But nevertheless, yeah, uh, it was still a compliment to yep. four. And then later in six, yeah, Therese Mustangs, yeah, had the Anvil Mustang. And this one again. So the car is overseas being filmed. And the scene, unbeknownst to me, is it's going to get ran over by a tank. That, that was actually unbeknownst to me as well. Like yes. I said, these things, uh, <laughs> these, these films kind of evolve as they go. So it's like someone has an idea, and the next thing you know, what? So they, of course, build doubles of Anvil, the, the Mustang. I think we a, built like eight or Yeah, you built a bunch of them. Lot, so, yeah. I, I, you know, I don't know this. They have they have the baby over there overseas. Where where was this? Where was where we were in the Canary Islands? Wow! Right, okay. and so I Tan get Tanner a, Reef. Yeah, Tanner I get Tanner a text Reef. of one of the obviously the the stunt cars crushed like a, a floor <laughs> mat because a giant tank ran over it, and it just said. We had a mishap or something like that. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. Steve. And I, did you send like, that to him? Whoa! No. I, 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 I think the other dentist, did what, the other dentist send it? Yeah, was, I think it was Dennis Marchant that oh said that to you. Oh, my God. I didn't have the heart to do it. I, I love the idea, but I thought, man, that's pretty it. cruel. That's, and Sorry, the stunt guy grabbed the wrong car. Uh, I, like, screamed out loud. I'm like, <laughs> And they're like, uh, stunt car, don't worry about it. I'm like, oh, I hate you all. Oh, my gosh. How awesome. But That's awesome stuff. Hey, hey, fun. Did, it, did you know that, that Dennis, despite the fact that this sounds like the dream job, correct? That's what he does? I mean, oh, he makes he makes movie magic and does it exactly. with cool, fast, hot rods. But that was not his know? first choice for a career. No. Do you know what it was? Piano tuning? No. Oh. He wanted to write for Hot Rod. You did not. I did. And it's funny, I didn't think about that until we were talking one day. I said, God, that, you know, but, but, but that actually was that what you wanted a, to do? actually a true story. John yeah. McGann, if you're listening, yep. but, but right you, over but, there. But you know what happened? He can't write? He couldn't pass there, the typing I'm, test. <laughs> <laughs> I am not joking. Really? Is this yeah. true? No, I, I went there. I think I was probably 18, 19 years old. I went down to Peterson. I, I The Will Shear Bowl. Yep. I got, I got my foot on the door. I got the appointment and everything else. And then so I walk in. I meet with the secretary. She says, well, the first thing you have to do is you have to do a uh, typing speed test. I'm thinking typing speed <laughs> test. Everything's a speed test. I, you know, I mean, it's like I'm thinking to myself. I think, gosh, you know, I never took typing. Uh, I don't type ever. Hmm. Okay. So, anyways, I thought, how how hard could it be? I wasn't. I was, and that was it. Like they shut, I, I said, really? I said, you're gonna you're gonna kick me out because I, I said I'm not here because I'm good at typing. I don't have yeah. good secretarial skills. But I said, I, you know, I love cars. Anyways, I, I was unsuccessful. So, nonetheless, that's and there's why. A, How's that well, for I'm a boomerang on a so, career? You yeah. know what? You lucked out. There you go. Simple yeah, I think, yeah, I think a whole lot of editors would go, good move. You bet. You bet. The fate but, was with you. <laughs> but, but. So we'd like to thank our sponsor, ARP and ARP-Bolts.com. And, uh, I mean, we all three build cars. We all work yeah. on this stuff. And I, I mean, tinker. You tinker. I we, tinker. Yes, we all build. Yeah, and, and you know what? It's, it's kind of a, a really cool multiple-purpose fastener for me because there's all the science and all the technology which is bottomless trust me unbelievable amount of research that they put into these sure, things absolutely and on top of it you get them out of the the package and they're absolutely beautiful which i've joked before it's like jewelry for your right. car and when pre -oil. we're building it yeah. when we're yeah and when we're building a high-end car it there isn't anything else going on it i need it's part of the criteria for right. me to have them lining the engine bay, not just on the engine, everywhere. Yeah. Right. So right. you get all the strength, the durability, the reliability, and fantastic good looks. Right. Sure. Kind of like Jeff here. And without, yeah. and without peer. <laughs> without peer. With, and you know what? Or peer. With, with, without peer. There's, no, there's nobody else Correct. that does that what is, they do. It is. So check them out at arp-bolts.com, and they can help you out. Doing this article for Hot Rod, I know a lot about uh, Dennis now, and it's, it's amazing, your career. I mean, as opposed to, you know, 
movie cars, in my experience in the past, are not quality cars generally. I have not seen that to be the case. No, they don't need and to be and tell, right. so and because the because the camera the is blind. Because the camera right. is blind. But what it, what we have with Dennis, and I mean this in, in in total honesty, the cars. What what intrigued me about your cars? I mean, I met you through through Nick Jennings. Yeah. Who has been right. a, a 40, 40, 45 year long friend, who built nice cars and was a, you know he had a dyno shop with his with his dad. Uh, call out to, to Nick for, for putting this all together. Your cars are nice. Your cars are well yeah. done. They're beautifully done. And you build stuff not only like movie cars, but you build you build you know road race cars. The 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 sixty eight Camaro is it yeah 60, yeah my son's that, car your yeah. son's car which is in the article yeah um, is my one of the cars that I want to build. I mean that's just one of the cars I've had in the past and I want to build it again. But those cars are, are really well done. Your your son's running uh, King of the Hammers. You're not building crap. I mean you don't you don't go and compete at King of the Hammers with a uh, a pseudo movie car that's you know kind of tinker toyed together. That's for sure. So yeah. that's a lot so of high so, effort. The, so these cars are these cars are really well done and the quality shows. Even even when you have to build uh, 29 identical Chrysler Green Hornet cars, all with 454 Chevrolets, 400 Turbo <laughs> Hydros, and four nine he, inches. He, I have the picture. He allowed me in that movie too. Is that in the Green Hornet? Yeah, yeah with the 515 GTB, the right hand oh, yeah, driver was sitting great. next to Black that, Beauty. That there was a go. really cool garage scene. That it really was, was extremely we had cool. Some garage really, scene. really nice cars there. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Was, I, cool. I, I enjoyed down there at that yeah. film. That was that fun. Was, that was a nice. That yeah. was a nice filming. The house was amazing. You know, it was just he, yes, incredible. that's frightening. What, up what? off of Beverly, uh, above yeah. the Beverly Hills Hotel. It was the underground garage, and oh, it was, it was, oh, was mind-bending. For the Green Hornet? I don't know whose house it was, but it was, you know, definitely in the hundreds nice. of millions, but it was wow, nice place. Wow. Nice place. Yeah. <laughs> it's got sconces on the way down mm -hmm. the, the drive, down into the underground, Impressive. on the walls, down mm -hmm. driving down into the garage. This is somebody's real house. <laughs> But, but, but I, 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 I will say, not to reiterate again, but the cars are really well done. And there are things that you've done that maybe a muscle car guy wouldn't want to see, but it's like you're putting the same motors, the LS3s, which are tried and true engines, in pretty much all the cars, which is great. Because when you're making it modular. Exactly. Because what you've got is, you know, if he's in Rio or he's in Japan or he's in the Canary Islands or he's wherever, he has the ability to interchange parts and pieces and he doesn't have to bring you know he doesn't have to bring a carburetor for a 66 satellite it's an ls3 he doesn't have to bring parts for uh, the, the ghostbusters cadillac it's an ls3 but that right. uh, with, with a got, bigger with a bigger in it, it yes. he's got cars on deck let's just talk like he's not here yeah. uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's got cars on deck that he can rob parts off of it's genius he doesn't even yes. we do yeah we, we do a lot of recycling if we wreck a car we crash a car we flip a car you know the car goes to the shop and it's instantly Taken apart, categorized, you know, motor, rear end, because it's all interchangeable stuff. So it's, right. Uh, right. you know, really at the end of the day, nothing really goes to waste. So, well, it's, yeah. it's brilliant. I mean, you said on the uh, Ghostbusters car, you had to go with a, a heavier duty uh, truck chassis. What was it? What was the rear end? You changed the rear end? Yeah, we uh, we didn't build the cars initially. I was called in. Uh, it's one of those funny stories, you know, where I budget the movie and they go, ah, man, we, we got a better price from somebody else. I'm like, I don't Good know if that's possible. That. Good luck. And then, yeah. of course, you know, I get a call, you know, a month into filming, hey, we're we're desperate for some help. Can you send guys in? At that point, I think we were already into another Fast and Furious. Someone said, I, I I really can't do that, but uh, you know, if you can get the car here, I'll I'll fix it for you. And there was two cars, and great, great. So you know, next thing I know, they got a buddy of mine. It's a driver. He's bringing the car from Canada, and it gets there, and we instantly start tearing it apart. I think by day two, I get a call. The other car broke, so that car came down. But yeah, you know, we uh, you know changed it over from basically it was like a. Uh, Suspension kit you'd put like in a 44, 44 hot rod, you know, nine inch and Mustang two stuff. And we, of course, went, you know, one ton truck, full <laughs> floater, you know, yeah. trophy truck style, tubular arms with big unibals and king shocks and coilovers and, you know, all the big stuff and big now sway it's not bars. Break. And, right. Yeah, and it never broke. From that point on, they right. could hammer those cars, you know. Just in case you day. need to, just in case you need to go to Irwindale and, and slide it around, right? Right there, there you go. Well, that's one of my favorite test spots. We uh, we hit Tim up quite a bit to go uh, test cars out there. It's close, and that's it's, awesome. He's always easy to deal with. So that's awesome. Well, the cars the cars are really well done. And, and what people don't understand this whole modular thing is that if the car breaks down, uh, there are you know somewhere between fifty and eighty people who aren't working. 
they're all stopped because that scene is not happening right now. And that, that oh, is huge amount problem. that is a huge amount of money when things break down. So that's why they build twenty nine, you know, black beauties, you know, for for the uh, backup and all these other cars that are in the article in Hot Rod that we'll put up on screen so people can see what's going on. But um, yeah, no, it, it it was really impressive, and your shop is is immaculate. I mean, obviously you just did a revamp, and you were saying we did do a little, uh, yeah. But prior to that, I mean, it's constantly busy. You're you're pulling cars through all yeah. the time, and and that's pretty amazing. It's not nonstop excitement over there, that's for sure. Never sure. a dull moment, but. Uh, well, you 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 to- I'm sorry, you were gonna go. No, I I always liked when you, when you visit or when I get to stop by. Um, he's. Not just the cars. There's the there's the lead beauty cars, and then there's the doubles that get whomped on. But um, it's kind of neat because he's creating full size Hot Wheels to a point. Um, <laughs> uh, there's a lot of neat engineering, like the the car that was the ramp car that they drove right. up. Yep. <clears throat> or the uh, what fascinated me was the backward driving tractor trailer. We've done a lot of weird stuff. And over there. there there's yeah. a driver in the trailer. Yeah. And working a whole steering mechanism, and this is off tractor trailer suspension stuff. It's not like, you know, little street rod stuff you can just cut up and weld together. This is big, big stuff. stuff, and he's yeah. re-engineered and repurposed how the whole thing works. So a tractor trailer can go backwards down a hill, not in CG, a real giant truck. And somebody's in the trailer driving that you, of course, can't see. <laughs> right. <clears throat> and, the, the, and I had saw that about three quarters of the way through and build. Yeah. And it was, it's, it's fascinating to look at because you have no, well, you do have rules. It's called physics right. and gravity yes. right. inertia and inertia. But other than yeah. that, it's hands off. It's like you make it work and make it work safe and make it work right. Have at it. You know, it's, it's, it's a crazy, crazy shop of, Unlimited and, and you, and to you a got point. five weeks to do it. Yeah. Oh, so, that's the other yeah, thing. Yeah, so, and by the yeah, way, fine. please, uh, we'd yeah. like to go to the moon by Thursday. Right. You, exactly. Right. And blow exactly. it up. And then blow it up. <laughs> yes. But that I was always fascinated with that, that you are charged with either you come up with the idea and then you got to actually make it real and work. Or someone said, hey, we want a vehicle like this. Make that happen. Yeah. So that's much. that's much more than... Hey, uh, copy copy this this seventy Roadrunner so we can make it roll over and put a roll cage in it so the guy's safe. That's a, that's a very different um, yeah. thing to start with. A clean sheet. You just right. Well, yeah. No one's ever very, done that before. What do we do? Figure what out how to make it happen and uh, don't let it fail. <laughs> so a crack a crack team of fabricating guys though that can handle engineering and the yeah. fabrication because it's it's got to work and function. Yeah, no, because that was that was, that a, that case, was a, with that rig. You're not having four extras. No, we had two, but that's that's pretty tight. We only have two, and that was a joint uh, collaboration between Effects, the second unit director. I mean, it was really just one of those things where everybody was throwing ideas at it, and the truck had rear steering, the trailers turned. I mean, it was there was so much involved with that, and then of course we're shooting it out. I think in New York on a icy parking lot, you know, so. Fun stuff. Something. Well, it, it, and that's something that's interesting. You were mentioning it too. What's happened, and what was, what was kind of surprising to me that, obviously, showed itself pretty quickly as I started to go get into this, is that they now trust you on a lot of this stuff. They will ask you questions about what about this and what vehicles should be used. Uh, you told me a story about um, Fast and Furious Three, Tokyo Drift about drifting where they came to you and they said yeah right what do you know about drifting and in my mind i think well, i could drift my chevelle right into a curb when i was 16 years old so that must be it must <laughs> that's count for drifting something. yeah so <laughs> but then you put but you put together a little package for them and that was kind of the the genesis of a whole effort for yeah go drift right yeah i would have never guessed it at that moment but yeah that's exactly really what so, uh, fired it all off so you put this package moment, together so. and they brought it into the executives at, at the movie studio, and they said, uh, explain this, right? Yeah. I mean, that was the deal. So Yeah, yeah. And then the next thing you know, he's in Tokyo for three weeks right. learning about drifting. So Not a bad gig. Not a bad deal. Not a deal. bad gig. And then, yeah. and, then, and then on the heels of that, they built you a – how big was the studio? I mean, the, the shop that you built? 
So we, uh, we rented a facility down in uh, Glendale right off of Fletcher, which coincidentally, when I was in high school, I would drag race right there on Riverside and Fletcher. That's kind of where it was one of our main hot spots. But our shop was just within, you know, a quarter mile of that. And uh, it was just an amazing, you know, it's like uh, when I go shopping for, I need a bigger facility. You know, there's so many parameters to think about cost, lease. You know, in this case, it was like, found this amazing building. You know, send an email over, hey, I found this, it's great, they'll give it to us for one year, this is a price, go ahead and do it. And I'm like, man, that's amazing. Like, you know, no one even came to look at it. They said, great, get it. So I was like, awesome. And it was 30,000 feet, brand new building, Wow. you know, huge ceilings. I mean, it was the ultimate place. It had a uh, desolate road out behind it that went along the wash that was just, you know, our perfect test that's facility. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that was that was a great place. But then that was that was just for one show and Correct. then that closed down yep. and then you rolled right into four right so you had to find another place yeah yeah so <laughs> i did that for quite some time then i thought to myself this is absolutely ridiculous because yeah. what well, you're moving heavy is, machinery or yeah the hoist the machinery geez, mills and everything's all that get stuff rewired for so, 220 power uh, and, yeah so i eventually you know opened up my own place and got a you know it, it was luckily in a in a facility where i could expand and expand and expand so now we have you know we have quite a quite a bit of space there. It all works out. Right? How long so. have you been in the place you're in now? Eleven years. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's been a, it's been a while. Wow. But uh, yeah, it's it's perfect. It's close to home, close to the That's studio. Right. It's kind of uh, off the beaten path, you know. So it works out really well. Do you know the background for what he ended up doing? How he ended up going through trade school and all this other stuff? He had his own shop, and it was it was interesting. It, we've got I, the reason I bring it up is. I have photos of it. Oh, that we're, gonna show, we're gonna show. Oh, people. we've got proof. We're gonna show people. Oh, we're gonna show people I'm, where he I'm came from. I'm already humored to the because to the to the nines. That's right. Can't I know. Type. I know too much. Was that, was that the, when I heard that? I went. This story's gonna be great. I, I, would, I would probably still fail a typing test today. Well, I mean, so would you know, I. I mean, I can I can get it done. Right. But uh, you know, if it was a speed test, they've got apps just, now that just right. you know you can speak and yeah. type it. Yeah, a chat GTP. You just don't have to do anything. There you go. Just that's it. Yeah, now you can just go AI. I want a story about this Camaro. <laughs> right, yeah, there's, it's getting a little scary there, yeah. Right. Uh, yeah wait yeah, till yeah. they have a pod. Would you say that for a podcast? And then as simple as that. But you have your, your three sons are working with you? Correct, correct, yeah. So, um, yep. so you got Dennis Jr.? Right, he's he's my uh, you know finance office guy. He's, uh -huh. he's really uh, taken over, uh, you know, billing, scheduling, dispatching, all that stuff, uh, along with uh, Claudia, who's my office girl, and she's great. Dennis has learned a lot from her. And then I have... Uh, Brian, who's out in the shop, and then Mason, my son, just came back from. He's going to school at uh, out of Tucson. He just came back, so he's there right now building some cars. I think they more work on their own cars than anything else. But hey, at least they're there. They're working on cars. But one of them's got a tri five, right? Uh, so we was built there a, a tri five? We, we did. We built a tri five right. for my dad. That was for his 75th birthday. I have a '56 Chevy, kind of the gasser style one. I have a '57 210 yeah. FI car, like a so. Black Widow kind of thing. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's very you know yep. very '60s era. So. Yep. There's no shortage of cars for those kids to tinker with over there right now. They're building a 69 Chevelle for my middle son, and you know, my youngest kid's got his 65 sitting on the sidelines right. next to you know, pull it apart and put it back together again. So, well, that's, anyways. that 69 is very cool. Yeah, the, yeah. Green, the green Phantom the Green. green the Green Phantom yeah. Green, and then you've got your orange one that's going together, six, another yeah. 69. Yeah. And then you've got another 69, which was significant. I think we put it in the story because that looked like your dad's. So there's, yep. there's a picture of his dad. And and Dennis, his tricycle is to the left, so it's like you know mm. really starting early. <laughs> and he's he's duplicated this car, but it's a '69 uh, RS RS yeah. RS, and uh, his dad is taking it apart like the day after. He's he on, on the up. lawn with jack stands and the sway bars, the springs, the shocks, everything spread across the front yard. But it was day one, like he bought the car, brought it home, and you know took it apart, <laughs> tore it apart in the front yard. So, you know. so perfect. So thus the is this the way that uh, Dennis was trained early on to. If you, if, you own it, if you own it, take it apart. Simple yeah. as that. But uh, so, so what else are you working on these days? Well, there's I mean, 10. Right? 10, we 10, 10 we should say that. We should say that. That's, that's, that's the, the big biggie news. coming out. Yeah, right? 10, 10 we just wrapped up. It's great. Um, I, uh, I saw a screener of it. It's, you know, one of my favorites ever. I mean, it's really, really, really? Came out, yeah, yeah, it really came out amazing. Um, there's a lot of last minute changes coming into it, but it really just all fell into place and the final products really, uh, like I said, I, I'm looking forward to seeing it, the final cut of it. But what I saw right. looked looked great. The car action looked great. The cars looked good. The and it's, it's, it's owner's Neil. Neil Moritz, yeah. Neil is Moritz it still Neil? He, yes, he's he's been involved. So since is he going to go to eleven? 
Is yeah, it going yeah, to pull well, a spinal think, tap think, and go to 11? Yeah, I think the way it is, it's going to go 10, maybe part two. I'm not sure what they're going to call it, but it definitely, hmm. uh, you know, I think B. we're definitely, yeah, we're definitely going to. Uh, yeah. Ben's been out there talking about it quite a bit, so I, I know they're not stopping now. Right. So. Well, he can only go to so many Formula One races. Did you see him at, Formula, at the Formula One race? No, He's but I had my, my guys were there. I was invited to go, oh, and yeah? I just couldn't sneak away. But we had we brought some cars down there. One of my drivers, uh, Josh King, was out there with the Hero Six Speed Charger. You know, cutting a lap on the track. So, nice. You know, so. nice. In terms of things that you uh, did, you get some vehicles that you wanted in that particular show. I mean, there were things that you said, hey, you know, this should be, you know, this Charger. It should be this, this yeah. vehicle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's always, uh, you know, there's always a lot of my own taste in these movies. I don't want to say that across the board, but, you know, because there's some that I don't want to take credit for. But uh, for the most part, yeah, there's the cars always have some, you know, you know, there's an influence for me involved in it. Uh, one of them being the uh, 66 Impala that the Jason Momoa character has. A very cool car. I own one that uh, well, that's, didn't you use, saw it. Actually, actually, oh, you know what? Yes. I, just, I just realized because I just saw your record. There's a picture yes. of that gray one. But that's, a, you know, one of my, you know, I just like that body style, big car. But there's a... There's a 93 LX Mustang, which, you know, whatever, but it's a car that I had. It was the first new car I ever bought. I was in my, my early 20s, so that's car, that car's in the film. Uh, there's just, you know, uh, 91 M5, which is another car that's in my shop, but there's, I think there's 15 of those. They all get destroyed, but don't worry, they weren't real M5s. But, uh, but anyways, you know, so, yeah, there's always the opportunities to. The little Alpha's cute, you know, a little orange Alpha in there. Yeah, I, I can't take credit for that one. That was the, uh, uh, oh, Jan, that's right. the production designer that, you know, was – said, hey, I really want this car in there, and, and it was great. You know, it's a perfect choice. It fits. It's the streets of Rome. It's uh, right. ideal, and it ties in with the character. So that was a cool one. Has Escort um, drivetrain in it? Yeah, it has. A, well, maybe not the whole drivetrain, but it has the EcoBoost motor in it. Oh, EcoBoost. So, okay. All right. Yeah, a little bit. It's a uh, very, well, very cool It's more car. reliable than an Alpha, at least in my experience. Yeah, that's for <laughs> sure. No no doubt about that. Yeah, it's a very, very fast little car, though. No Lucas wiring. Yeah. Uh, yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> the old days there. Yep. Uh, Stellantis. <laughs> I did a lot. I did a lot of work on uh, Jaguars back in the day when I was a kid. You know, V eights and I mean, <clears throat> it was always the wiring that would get you. You know, the uh, so. the, the, the the son of evil, mm -hmm. Lucas yeah. Wiring. Yeah, yep. Yeesh. Yep. there's a um, glad they put them in planes like Spitfires. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hey, we'd like to thank our sponsor, ARP-Bolts.com. we got a fantastic little backdrop here. They make it an outstanding series of bolts, almost anything you would need for engines, chassis, things like that. In fact, we were at lunch today, and a guy asked you about the, the, the bolt on the back of your shirt, and, it was, and, it was, and I said, well, it's really about a head bolt. They neck the, 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 the stem down of the bolt on a short a small block Chevy head bolt, so the clamp load is even across three different head bolt lengths on a small block Chevy. And, uh, you know, so that, that's the kind of technology that you get out of sure. ARP. And uh, we, we've all got stories on all that right. stuff. Well, but, for a uh, translation of what he said, call ARPBolts.com. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the message is that you can't get any better than that. No, you so cannot. There yep. you go. Nope. Excellent. And then just check them out at ARP-Bolts.com. We'd like to thank our friends at InTheGarageMedia.com. They have three fantastic magazines. They've got Classic Truck Performance. They have Modern Rotting and my favorite, All Chevy Performance, with Nick, my buddy Nick, oh, you're the so editor. Oh, so biased. So, Correct. yes, of course. Yes. But uh, they're doing print media, which yes. is, uh, of course, our favorite. So, in uh, color magazine. and everything. In color and everything. Yes. And, and you can get your, your car on the cover of one of those books, right. which is right. a fun no, that's deal. A lot. Great yeah. tech. You Great tech. Written by you you know, not always written by me, but yeah. People. Yeah. Not yeah. always right. written by me. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Just so pick it up and read it. at yes. InTheGarageMedia.com, and uh, they're our friends, and uh, they will thank you. 65, right? Uh, 65 Chevelle that your, your kids put darkness. together? That's what yeah, so the 65 is uh, basically, I built that car originally for myself. It's an exact replica of what I drove in high school. Okay. All the, all the way down to the Hurst was, Seagate shifter. So, really? That was in yeah. the trade school. You went to a trade school in, was that? In Arizona. Arizona, yeah. okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was, uh, it was funny. I mean, I knew what my car ran cause I'd go to Firebird Raceway all the time and the car would run on, on my Remington bias plies. It would run a 13 0 at 110. And then we get to the school drags and it was just incredible. I got the fastest ET, but it was amazing how many, you know, 10 second cars I beat that day. You know, everybody at school had a 10 second car or 11 second car, but we get out there and my 13 0 car was the fastest car at the school. Oh, so like oh. I said, it doesn't sound impressive, but at the, at the time it was pretty cool. Just, you yeah, know, no doubt, no but, doubt. Uh, like I said, a lot of good times there. I could never afford a set of good tires. That was always my limiting factor. But, you know, I'd race guys at the street race from a roll. I'd, I'd negotiate for, we do from a roll, and then I'd negotiate four cars, five cars. I did all this different, you know, yeah. finagling 
to you know optimize my car's chances of winning but uh which you know worked uh, six, oh, what does it say no 60 percent of the time it worked every time but you know yeah <laughs> what's, what's that out of a? I acre like that one. Yeah, 60, I like that. Sixty percent of the time, it worked every time. Uh, twice a day, broken clocks, right? Mm-hmm. You know, that whole thing. Yeah. So, is there? A way, I, you know, I, I should know this, but I guess I don't need to know this. Is there a way, besides upcoming issues of Hot Rod Magazine, <clears throat> to learn more about what you're doing? Is there an actual website, or I'm assuming you keep it quiet and you? Yeah, don't, you know, it's you funny. Yeah, all these years, I've, I've been meaning to put a website together. I, I've had the same website for I think a decade. And it's just one picture of a truck, and that's it. And I've never <laughs> elaborated on it. You know, I just that's, uh, that's actually awesome. Please uh, leave it like that. I know. Forever. I just, <laughs> it's t- here's here's your here's your truck. Yeah. T- t- typically <laughs> speaking, we're doing as you know as much as we can. So I, I've never been. Uh, you know, out looking for more work, it always just seems to sure. come our way. So, but well, then it's simple. If you want to see his work, go to the movie. Yes, right <laughs> there you go. Exactly. Then you're going to see it in yeah. full color yeah. and surround sound. Go check, sound go check and out Fast Ten, and you'll see the latest and the greatest. But yeah, it's a, it's a great selection of cars in this one. Yeah, well, I, I'm excited that you said you. This is like one of your favorites already. It came so out. Far. Yeah, it's amazing. Really, really came out. Yeah, good. it's yeah, cool. It awesome. the, the Jason Momoa character was a huge, huge asset, I think, to the franchise. Hopefully he comes back around, but it was just, you know, did some you pretty to, funny stuff. Did you have to convince him about the uh, Caprice and the, the Impala? Or no, he, he loved it. You know, did we, we I sent him some options. Uh, did he see your car? No, okay. he did not. But uh, my, my car actually wasn't completed at the point that car came to life. But uh, but nonetheless, so we went through a couple of different options, and uh, the 66 was a winner. I mean, it's got, you know, 14, <laughs> five tires in the back. It's, you know, got all the elements of, uh, you know, wow. that makes, makes for a badass car, so. And it looked great going up against the Charger. It was just, you know, it all uh, came together really, really well. That brings up a good point. How long is the period of time? So, you know, you, you, you build these cars, they do the filming. How long does it take before you usually see the fruition of, uh, of your work? What um, is it, six months, a year, more, less? No, it's, it's, uh, it's pretty continuous. I mean, it's kind of like we, we do the movie, we wrap, and then you're always doing additional photography because – there might be some shots they come up with or they need, or maybe it's a different location. So I feel like we're building cars right to the end of editing. I mean, it's really, there isn't like a big right. void there. And uh, So through through post-production kind of thing? Well, it's just, it just like I said, it just yeah. seems like it's busy from All the time the I start yeah. to the time that movie is, you know, the premiere comes. So Amazing. Yeah, mm. it's, and then, there's, boom, there's, there's another there's, one. Yeah, there, there isn't any, there doesn't seem like there's any, any uh, relaxing right. time, you know, in there. So anyways, but That's like great. I said. Can't complain about that. And he's perpetual. That's, he's, that's good. good way perpetual play. motion. Exactly. So, so the situation with uh, obviously you did the Fast and Furious cars. You've done all these other movies. Is there any other particular car that you're like super happy with? Something that we just said, hey, you know what? We pulled this off. It was a car that I didn't know whether we were going to be able to do this, and it just worked out great. I mean, the car, the cars that come to mind are, are stuff that we really build, you know, like scratch built, like, uh, you know, we were mentioning the Fast Five crane heist, you know, earlier, like that was something that we literally just, you know, bought some metal and, you know, we didn't even have a surface plate at that point. We literally leveled out stands, you know, and, and kind of, you know, modeled it after monster truck suspension. And I mean, I guess, I guess I always feel confident, you know, I never have any doubts, but sure. you know, when you look back and I go, wow, we just kind of threw that together and went on and tested and it worked great. We had a, this is the launching of the cars out of the moving train. Yeah. But that know which, truck, we know which one that was. It's fast know. five. But if oh, you watch five, that, okay. if you watch that sequence uh, coming in, the trucks jumping, it's doing all sorts of crazy stuff. And, uh, you know, there's a lot that goes into shock tuning. I think on that one, we had Fox shocks, you know, trophy truck stuff, you know, sure. seven, two bypass shocks and all that stuff. And, wow. uh, but yeah, so those are the ones that I really, uh, I guess, get the most gratification from because you build something from scratch and it works. Same would go for the Fast Six ramp car. That was another one. Um, you saw the the most recent yeah. version of that, but like that was another one where um, it was kind of like a you know cocktail napkin drawing, and uh, you know it evolves into something that functions and works and has four wheel steering. And you know wow. you take it out to Willow Springs for the first time, and it's like, hey, it works. You know what I mean? It's it's always. Uh, wow. So those are fun. You know, anything that you can build that's, you know, like I said, never been built before is cool. I mean, I love modifying cars as well, but we have a lot of practice with that, and that's kind of repetitious. You know, like even regardless of what the car is, the underpinnings are are typically very similar. So still fun, still cool, but building something, you know, from nothing is what I really enjoy doing. Wow. Wow. There's a there's a car that um, was was interesting to me, and he had it lined up, and I got a nice photo of it. It's a 
I don't even know what you call that thing. The thing with the with the Terrell front suspension in it. You know, the twi- twi- yeah, axles. that's what we're talking about. Yeah, that's the that's ramp the one, car. So that's, that's the, the one you're version. talking about. Yeah, that is the ramp car. Yeah. I see. Okay. All right. Because I'm catching up now. Drives up yeah. and over. The, the car is used as a ramp. Right. It, was, it was introduced in six, and that was a. You but know, it concept. never ran, never ran in the movie though. Oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Oh, we had, we had, we had, I think, seven of those cars in six. Oh, you're we're referring to 10? No. In 10, yes. it did not. In 10, okay. unfortunately, it played static. Yes. Uh, and talks with the director a couple of days ago, I think, for the next one, it's going to come back, okay. you know, in full force. But uh, yeah. you know, on the first, on Fast 6, we built seven of those cars. And, you know, the cool thing about it was they really were running the cars and launching them up into the air. So yeah. it was, you know. With the with the Olds motors in them and the Tornado? The new one has an Olds motor. The last ones I did a little bit different. Those ones had an LS, a 400, and a V-Drive. So basically the motor was behind ah, you. Ah, okay. So and it came forward it to back. a V-Drive. Okay. The V-Drive was right behind your back. And then that went to a uh, K30 Chevy. Okay. Front axle okay. with uh, hydraulic steering. The funniest thing about that was the first time I drove that, I think it's one of the scariest things ever because if you've ever been in a V-Drive boat, yes. they are hellaciously noisy. Mm-hmm. And to sit there in the seat, you're leaning back, and you got the V-Drive right here, and it's like, God, it's just going to come apart. I hope Cassell did a good job <laughs> on this thing because, you know, you're, I'm you're going, going, to 80, die you're going 80 miles creation. an hour with these massive straight-cut gears right, yeah. you know, right laid yeah. up against your spine. But uh, you're, you're learning what all the uh, – Front motor dragster guys yeah. learned when they sat on the on the, on the differential. Diff. Yeah, yeah, that's I know. Uh, that's a that's this a could go bad. That, that, that takes <laughs> some balls. Excuse that's the right. pun, but yeah, that's right. uh, not not a ride I would want. There's right. a nitro car sitting on the diff. That's right. And you, uh, I think we mentioned uh, slightly the the King of the Hammers event. How much how much off road racing are you doing currently? You said your son drove at the most recent race. Yeah. So so what it is, I've been competing in the. Well, I, I used to race desert going all the way back in the early '90s, and then I changed it over to short course about maybe seven years ago, just because it was easier. I didn't have to take a week off of work, you know, to go pre run and everything else. And then uh, my son was dying to do it. My son got into it, and then uh, we had a newer truck and an older truck. My truck was getting, my son was getting better lap times in the old truck than I was in the new truck. So I thought, well, we got to retire this. We have to retire this truck and put the kid in the new truck. So, uh, yeah, and this was the first where uh, Great American Short Course held an event in dead center at King of the Hammer. So it was a short course race right in the middle. So it was a wow. cool event. Dust Bowl, but fun event. So. Uh, I bet. And it, uh, you had a bearing problem yeah and he was running third so he's being he's competitive he's very competitive he finished second in points last year and he was oh, doing great wow. at that Royce and, and it was just a fluke thing like one of those wow. things that shouldn't fail and uh it's always frustrating anybody that's in the car racing knows because you spend months prepping the truck and sure everything's new and it's perfect and then you know somehow some way you know a bearing takes a wow. shit on you but anyways um you know there's always the next one so you're so. gonna drive again yeah so my, my next <laughs> well my kid's now complaining because he says dad our truck's old now, you know, I mean, this truck's probably six years old, but yeah. by those, you know, the standards, okay, it's an old truck. So I'll probably end up getting my kid another truck, then I'll get back into my, right. you know, the current truck. So, wow. Yeah. So good time. Yeah, I bet. Does he aspire to another level beyond that? Is he looking to do I, I don't think so. Or not at this moment. Well, I mean, that, that we could do too. We have, we have trucks available to us for that as well. So we'll see. Well, it's yeah. like I said, that's what kind of deterred me from it over the past. I love doing it, but it's just... I never have that two weeks to take off to go down to Mexico, you know, so that's what really yeah. is it's the limiting cool. factor in my world. But uh, if that ever opportunity comes up and we can pull it off for sure, he's bugging me for that as well. So uh, I bet <laughs> that's the way it works. Yep. You get them to one level and they want another one. Mm. Yeah. Imagine that. <laughs> imagine that. So any other exciting projects that you can allude to uh, at this point talking about? Yeah, I've been holding people? back because I know your world is not, open available to yeah. right right to um, just go oh yeah hell <laughs> i mean the only thing i say we just we also just wrapped up was uh gran turismo that was a really fun project uh it was great it was uh dealing with true race cars like tt3 race cars so that that was a lot of fun it was all shot in hungary but uh we prepped the majority of all the cars in the shop nice. put them on planes got them out there but uh what kind of speeds were they seeing well, that was that was what was kind of different than most movies is uh the director neil wanted to see, he wanted to see speeds that were accurate to race speeds which is mm-hmm. like i said on camera mm-hmm. it's hard it's hard to perceive that you know whether the car is going 100 or 180 right but nonetheless you know we push those cars and and i there's a good friend of mine named elia who uh, owns a company called gem effects and he does the pods that I know, on the roof. I know elia. do you know elia I do. okay sure I do. so elia built a pod and we put them on these uh he did the last ones didn't he yeah, he's, well, he's, we've done a bunch yes. of stuff together, but he put pods on these cars that it's were... over uh, by uh, Mike Ryan. We've had Mike on. 
Yeah, Mike Ryan's another yeah. good buddy of mine. Yeah. Great guy. But uh, but anyways, I think we set the record for pods. I think they were clocked on a pod car at 160 miles an hour. Wow. That's and that's 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 driving the car from the roof with the you know hydraulic actuated yeah. steering. You know, so and so that's that's pretty. Yeah, you, you know, do that. That's pretty yeah. impressive. I'm and then what's more impressive that. is then you have the actor in the car right. going along for the ride. So uh, anyways, but it all worked out 100 percent flawless. Everything that's went, awesome. Went great. So that's awesome. Fun yeah. Time. I'll tell you. Yeah, I was impressed. And I'm that still release? impressed. Is that, uh, that isn't released yet, right? No. Uh, the trailer's come out. The trailer looks great. I don't know the exact release, release date, but I got to assume it's coming up pretty soon. So. Yeah. yeah. I've yeah. seen the trailer. That looks good. I, for some reason, I yeah, did it's, not it's, it's a great. The uh, there's a great. Yeah. You know, the whole. I don't know if you know the whole Nissan backstory to that, but. Uh, um, no. Which, well, the story. The story of that that movie. Tell us. The movie is basically going back to where uh, they had a Nissan basically sponsored a deal where. Whoever was the best video game driver got a chance to drive a Nissan race car. Okay. Well, then, I, I, yeah, for real. And there was a group of the kids that were picked, and then that they went into the to an academy to learn how to drive, which it was in, it was actually 370s. Uh, we actually did it with GTRs, and then you know whoever the best of that was would got got a chance to drive in an LM, LM1 car, which is wow, you know, pretty unbelievable. So yeah. it's a true story, or based on a true story, but uh, it's a pretty cool deal and. Uh, and Nissan was a huge part of this whole project. Nissan, you know, gave us contacts and cars and parts nice. and all, all the good stuff to make it all happen. So, well, you work with a lot of manufacturers. We talked about that as well. You had obviously Dodge is in a lot of the stuff you guys do, and you said Nissan yep. was also another favorite. But you work with everybody. You said we do. Yeah, General Motors, Mercedes. I mean, right. they're all you know, they're they're all great. They're, you know, usually. I mean, as long as the the project is beneficial to them, you know, sure. they're they're all in. We just did a. We just did Transformers with Porsche. That was a fun one, and that was that was a rare one too because Porsche stepped up and helped out. But it was really a period movie, which was a very, it was a very rare. You know, usually yeah. a manufacturer wants their latest and greatest, but in this case, it was you know uh, like 91, 90, 930 Porsches. So, really? Uh, oh, those are cool. Yeah, yeah. buddy, of mine own there was a huge. You know, he was all over the world rounding up wheels and you know I all bet. the pieces and parts that we needed. So uh, wow, yeah, a lot of fun though. Well, that's great. How awesome when is, is that? When is your article coming out? Uh, it's out. Is it which is the newest one? Uh, in terms of the print side, probably another yeah, don't, don't print side, probably another two months. I'm gonna guess. Okay, yeah. so it's on what, Motor Trend. It is on Motor Trend or so it's online. Com. Yes, but it's not in the print book yet. It is R not remember, in the print book. Old, old school guy. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, don't the print. I, I missed all my mags. There's only a couple left. You know, that's it's sad. How's your yeah. typing? <laughs> <laughs> Touche. I'm, I'm always here for lessons if anybody needs any help. Absolutely. So just, That's just good. That's good. So, ooh, what is you? I don't know. You don't know? I don't know. I'll, I don't know. I'll, 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 you kind of go, I'll, uh, No, jump. I'm going to hope for a prediction. So I've got an, up, a couple of upcoming features. There's yeah. going to be in Hot Rod, we're going to have a feature coming out on Joe Rogan's Nova. Nice. Love that car. Nice. Thank yep. you. Yep. And there's a Sketchpad article I did a little while ago, which is I gathered up some artists and came up with some ideas of stuff that's not expensive to start with the car and here's some cool ideas and one of them was a scamp that bob florian built right that we, or we sure. built for yeah, bob an awesome car. and i have a new sketchpad article and so the feature on the who scamp did, who did you use stanford no no uh, i used use? uh tavis highlander and um eric bruckmeyer i don't know eric. you okay. do I do? Yeah. Okay. Good but anyway, okay. so they're, we're going to say, here's the new sketch pad. And, oh, remember the last one? Well, here's a real car built from it. So right. with That's any cool. hope, you'll be in the same. That'd be great. Because then I'd bother buying it. You know, <laughs> <laughs> We'll have to have like a magazine, you know, you beer celebration sure. there or something. I'm down yeah, for so. that. Well, I'm maybe we'll definitely get, down maybe for Maybe we'll get that. the napkin that you used for uh, Fast Five and we'll put that Do outside. you have right. any of that stuff? Did you ever save no, any of that? I was never good at you know saving <laughs> souvenirs. I'm not Imagine. even like, not, not a souvenir. Yeah. I know. No, there's so many. That's just like something. That, that, that's awesome. something that would be neato. That there are all those things at the time. It's like, okay, great, build the car, throw it's it away, right. and you know. That's right. I do that with what? cars sometimes. That I regret selling. Right. What but. restaurant? Tonight? No. What restaurant? No. Oh, what restaurant? oh, red restaurant. What restaurant did you make your sketch in? The fat, the fast five. That that sketch was at a Bob's Big Boy. I'm trying to think back. Oh, Toluca the Lake, twenty Toluca to one. Lake, yeah, yeah. The one with the ramp car. I nice. can't remember. Odds are, was probably at Tommy's. Would be you know my first assumption there, works. but I, I can't remember. Both were on napkins. Yeah, napkins and like a little photo. And what do you think about that? Yeah, really? So. Yeah. It's a, That's wonderfully cool. organic, though. You bet. See now, everyone out there, see that amazing, incredible. 
life that he's living and it still starts on a napkin. Not the not just the first time. Later on, while the ball is rolling, he's not using some giant digital sketch pad. The man's on a napkin. So that means if it's a really good idea and has really good talent behind it, it comes to fruition. You don't need all the other stuff. You actually just have to be good at what you do and have a good idea. Truth. This true. Is true. If it and, wasn't and a good idea, it wouldn't have flown. Right? And this this is funny too. But another napkin story is uh, we we built a Batmobile for the, the Ben Affleck car, and that was drawn on a napkin by the production designer, literally on a napkin that he showed me. He goes, "I want something, you know, shaped like this." So it's uh it's amazing what can be accomplished with a napkin, I guess. Sure. You know? um, uh, why, why is my brain failing? Oh my goodness, he's gonna kick me in the teeth. <laughs> my my brain is trying to pull too many names up. Um, yeah, you probably can see the smoke. Oh my gosh, good lord! I'm 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 looking at the man's face. Designer for Shelby, did the Shelby Daytona coupe. Oh, uh, um, see now Pete, everybody else Pete, is Pete Brock. Brock. Uh, Pete Brock. Yes, there you go. I've got a a, a a piece of art that he was kind enough, uh, and they were a numbered piece. Yeah. It's the sketch, the first sketch. Which nice. if you go to Brock's bre online, you can get right. you can get them. And it's the first sketch of the coop. And if I remember right, him telling me that was on a napkin wow. at, at a lunch thing. And he's like, you know, showing it and showing Shelby. And he's like, that's never going to work. Or, yeah. you know, they all they all gave him a bunch of shit. Amazing. Phil Remington said that's never going to work. They the Shelby had some aerodynamic guy from I don't know if it was from Boeing or yeah. someone down there. And he said, well, that's never going to work. And then they threw the thing together from a wrecked chassis, a, right. a broken Cobra, gave him 90 days to do it. Most of the shop wanted nothing to do with it. So he had, he had pushback from underneath his own roof. Wow. Then they took it out and, and <laughs> beat the living crap out of the speed record with, with yep. the Cobras. And then everybody's, when they picked up their jaws, awesome. then they went over and, and beat uh, Ferrari with it. Fun but fact. fun fact, the, he found... Uh, in I think it was Ford's archive, all these recovered German like 1930s aerodynamic stuff, and he couldn't understand German, but he could understand the math. And he's like, "No, this is going to work." And everyone else was like, "You're out of your mind." Right. Sorry, Peter. Oh, good lord. I could, I don't, I'm sorry. I'm brain fading. But uh, the very short version is, is if I'm remembering right, it napkin car. Yeah. Okay. You know, which which no is doubt. really really cool. No doubt. Let alone idea for the whole drifting thing yeah right yeah. napkin idea yeah so awesome get some napkins that's right something maybe that's the lesson Absolutely. we pull away from this i like it you have well, to go no. somewhere else to use the napkin you can't there use you the go. napkin in your own house you have to right. be somewhere else you have to be at a restaurant that's right. right you have yeah. to be right. somewhere it's a burger joint that's, where right. The, that's right that's the best <laughs> questionable <laughs> food and <laughs> and on that note are we yes we are we See have, how we fast have, that goes. We have we have quick. wrapped them Thank up. Thank you here. so much for absolutely. Taking the time yes, to thanks for coming talk. on out. Thanks absolutely. for giving me the time to do the story. I really yeah, enjoyed yeah, it. Really enjoyed it. No, really uh, enjoyed it. So, so what that, is the title of the article? Uh, I'm trying remember. to remember. Can't remember. Right, off the both top. are useless. We okay. are we way are. to promo. But you'll find it. You'll find it. <laughs> yeah, just to dab the saliva. Anyway, but uh, thank you again for uh, tuning in for this episode of Car Guy Confessions without Jeff Smith. He'll be back. Don't worry. He we'll will. get him back. And that's right. Sponsored by ARP Bolts, ARP Bolts.com. We couldn't do it without him. We really appreciate everything that's gone on there, and I appreciate everybody's time. And Steve, yeah. always good to see you. Awesome. So yeah, uh, until next and thanks time. Thanks for coming again, Dennis. Appreciate oh, it. Yeah. It's Absolutely. awesome. Take care. Be, be well. See you.